Welcome back to Black News Tonight. The digital streets are buzzing after one of the nation's top football prospects, Travis Hunter, chose to attend HBCU Jackson State University. Now, he chose Jackson State over Florida State University, a football powerhouse. The move to attend HBCU over a Power 5 school has some people questioning if the star's decision is a mistake, with some suggesting it could hurt his football career, his education, and maybe even his future life in the world. In more recent headlines, the Biden-Harris administration has announced a historic $5.8 billion cumulative investment and support for HBCUs. Joining me now is Albany State University alumnus and the University of Southern California's Race and Equity Center founder and executive director, Dr. Sean Harper. My brother, good to see you. Uh, we appear to be in an era where top high school prospects are seriously looking at HBCUs as their school of choice, not just football and basketball. Uh, Marco Marcour chose Howard uh, a couple years ago, even though he was a, one of the top 25 basketball prospects in the country. How does this national exposure for HBCUs impact things for them? Yeah, well, first things first, Mark, my brother, happy birthday to you. I hope you are having a great <laughs> one. Thank you for having me on your show on your birthday. Uh, this is really great. I appreciate you also covering this. Um, I'm really thrilled that Brother Travis has chosen to take his talents to a historically black university, uh, more specifically Jackson State. Um, I think that during this, the, this period in American history, um, you know, there seems to be a resurgence of the appreciation for the role that historically black colleges and universities play in the lives of, of black students. They literally are places where black lives matter. Um, and I'm really glad that Brother Travis and so many other black students who are choosing to take their brilliance and their talents and all of their other gifts to HBCUs recognize, right, that, um, you know, these are places that historically and contemporarily have overproduced black uh, excellence, right? That, you know, it's not just predominantly white schools like the one at which I teach um, that, you know, produce people uh, for the professions who go on to lead. Uh, HBCUs do more than their fair share. So I'm really glad that Travis is going, going to uh, uh, Jackson State. I get so frustrated, man. I hear the narrative that's going around online uh, from so-called experts that attending an HBCU may hurt his athletic chances, his success. He might not be able to go pro because HBCUs don't have resources. They said they're educationally inferior, they're athletically inferior, one person said. You know, why does it feel like these HBCUs are getting looked down upon, uh, particularly for bigger name recruits? Well, certainly these are critics who've never been to Albany State, the place where I went um, and that I love. Um, they hadn't been to Morehouse College, uh, the place that I'm, that, that I'm proudly repping tonight in this great sweatshirt that my brother David Wall Rice sent me today. Um, you know, it is irresponsible and, you know, intellectually lazy to critique a thing that you don't know. So there's, there's that. Um, you know, I have a really good friend. Um, he's very famous. He often says something like, you know, uh, there's a presumption that white people's water is wetter. Um, you know, I think that that is playing into this, right? Um, it, it's just the presumption is the implicit biases that if it's black, then it can't be good, right? Listen, uh, Travis decided to turn down Florida State to go to Jackson State. Here's the deal. At Florida State, Black men are 2.9% of the undergraduate student body, but they're 79% of the football team, right? Let's talk graduation wow. rates for a moment. Let's talk graduation rates. Florida State graduates 83% of its students within six years, which is a great number, 83% in six years. For Black men on who are student athletes there, it's 31%. Right. So, I mean, if we want to talk inferiority here, uh, we're talking about a context that doesn't know how to do anything uh, or not much with black men other than, you know, put them on a football field uh, to earn billions of dollars on behalf of the institution and the athletic conference. Wow. Recently, the White House administration now 
decided it was going to invest in HBCUs, as I noted earlier. Do you anticipate that there will be an uptick in enrollment and recruits, both because of what the White House is doing and also when big name athletes say they're going to go to an HBCU? I most certainly hope so. Um, you know, it makes a difference when a top recruit like Travis decides to go to Jackson State. I wish he had gone to Albany State, but you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll live with Jackson State. It, it well, does <laughs> it does a lot, not just not just for Jackson State, but also for the universe of HBCUs as you know, very talented black women and men uh, student athletes. Um, you know, make their choices about where to go to college. You know, it's not just about the opportunity to play ball or run track or swim or whatever your sport is. You know, these young people have to also ask, am I going to have any black professors? Am I going to learn anything about my black self in the courses that I take in the curriculum that is given to me at these places? Um, am I going to be uh, called the N word by you know, white boys in a fraternity who decide they also want to dress up in blackface. You know, look, these are all the kinds of things that happen at predominantly white institutions. So I I love the exposure that 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 Travis and other, you know, talented black students um, are, are giving to HBCUs through the choices that they're making. Wow. Well, we appreciate your contribution to the show tonight, my brother. It's always great to talk to you. It's always great to see you. And you are a reminder that a place like Albany State can produce, in the same way that Fisk produced a W.E.B. Du Bois, you know, um, Albany State produced a Sean Harper. And that tradition continues with extraordinary consistency, man. You are a reflection of the best of our tradition. You're my brother. I love you, man. Thank you for joining me on Black News. Tonight, I want to point out he's also a good Kappa man. You can always tell because they're always the smartest ones in the room.